Hey everybody, it's Mark here with The Thoughtful Gamer. I was going to do a different video this week, but I learned a really cool trick-taking game over the weekend and decided to tell you all about it instead since I wrote about trick-taking on Monday. Uh, the link for that will be at the bottom uh, in the in the description uh, if you want to read about how much I like spades and trick-taking. Uh, but I learned this really fascinating kind of pseudo trick-taking game from a friend who learned it from a Lebanese friend of hers. And after a bit of research, I discovered that it's actually pretty popular in that part of the world. However, I didn't even find a board game geek listing for it. So I suspect it'll be new for a lot of you. Um, and also in my research, I discovered that the way I learned it is actually kind of a sub variation of this game, maybe not the most popular way to play. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm gonna tell you about the variant I learned and what I could find about uh, the kind of general style of this game. It's called Tricks Complex or Trex uh, Complex or even just Tricks or Trex. I believe Tricks Complex is the version that I'm gonna be teaching you um, that I learned and the general game is called Tricks. It requires just a standard deck of cards. Uh, so let's learn how to play. So as with most trick-taking games, you're going to deal out the entire deck. This game, I believe, requires four players because everyone needs an equal number of cards and you also need all the cards in play. So everyone's going to get randomly dealt out 13 cards. Uh, you determine someone to be the first player. I read online that a certain card, I can't remember now, maybe the seven of hearts or the ten of hearts or something like that, determines first player. You can just do it randomly. And... The game will go through all four players being in charge of one of the primary decisions. Now everyone's going to get their hand of cards, you're going to look at your hand of cards, whoever is selected as that first primary player is then going to select which game they play. Because this is really a game cons consisting of two sub-games, one called Tricks and the other one called Complex. Just to make things a little bit trickier, uh, the one called Tricks is not the trick-taking game, it's the other one. The Complex is the trick-taking game, but don't worry about that. Uh, I'm sure there's a long history for why that's the case. They're going to make that primary decision, and that's a very, very important decision because this is a super swingy game. Points, we went in our game, someone with a 300-point lead that didn't even win uh, in the end. And making the right decision of which game to play is super critical because you only make that decision once. So if I was the starting player, I looked at my hand and I said I wanted to play complex, that means the next hand we are all definitely playing tricks. And then it moves on to the next player after the, that set of two games and they have a decision looking at the first set of cards, the first hand, which one they're going to play. And different hands are going to be better for different games. So let's get into the two different games. Let's start with tricks because that's the simplest one. Now with tricks, you're just trying to get rid of your cards as fast as possible. And you're just going to be placing cards adjacent to our next two cards that are adjacent to them in numerical order. So it's again, it's a standard deck of cards, two through ace, um, like many, many games. And whoever's turn it is can, in the very beginning of the game, play any jack. Each suit starts with the jack. And say I had, let's see here, the jack of diamonds, I would play that out on the table and that's my turn. Then it goes to the next player. Now the next player has the choice. They can play the jack, uh, a different jack of one of the other suits, or they can play the 10 or the queen of diamonds to lay next to this. And so maybe they find uh, the queen of diamonds right here. They play next to it. Now it moves on to the next player. They can play any jack because they're not all out yet. Or they play the king of diamonds or the ten of jacks. And you keep doing that until everyone is out of cards. Uh, and you can play adjacent in numerical order next to something that's already out. Or you can start a new suit starting with the jack. If you cannot play, you pass. And if you can play, you must play. Uh, there's no situation in which you can play a card, you have a legal play in which you are allowed to pass. And the scoring for this is very simple. The first person who runs out of all their cards gets 200 points. The second person gets 150. The third person gets 100. And the final person gets 50. Now let's move on to the complex one, which is actually more complex. Uh, maybe that's why it's called that. And this is a trick-taking game. So again, everyone gets dealt their hand of cards. 
whoever's initiative it is, whoever's turn it is, chooses. Maybe they look at their hand and they say, oh, I want to play complex. This is a basic trick-taking game. If, if you don't know the fundamentals, go read my review of spades. That'll tell you how to play spades, which is pretty close uh, to just the fundamentals with a couple tricky things added. But basically, everyone gets a, hands of car a hand of cards. Uh, the first player leads with the card. Say, I lead with this ace of hearts. Everyone else must then play a heart down on the table that they have from hand, uh, and whoever has the highest number of that suit takes the trick and places it in front of them. This is a very simple trick-taking game with slightly complicated scoring. So there's no trump suit. It's basic trick-taking. If you can follow the suit, you must follow the suit. And if you can't, you can play any card and then whoever has the highest card of, whoever played the highest card of that suit, uh, the suit that led, wins the trick and takes it in front of them. So that's just basic trick taking. Here's how the scoring works. First of all, each trick you win is negative 15 points. Next, each of the four queens is negative 25 points each. The king of hearts is negative 75 points if you take it, and every single diamond is negative 10 points. Those are the four different scoring mechanisms. As you'll notice, they are all negative points. So you got tricks, each trick is negative 15, each queen is negative 25, the king of hearts is negative 75, every single diamond is negative 10 a little bit reminiscent of hearts there. One additional rule is that with these five cards, if you have at the beginning of the round, any of the queens or the king of hearts in hand, you may reveal it to everyone else to double it. A bit like the doubling die in backgammon, from what I understand. Um, and if you do that, the penalty for taking that card is doubled. And if you manage to successfully not take it. So if you own the queen of spades, you reveal it, you double it. It is now worth negative 50 points to the person who takes it. But if you're the one who has it in hand and someone else takes it, they get negative 50 points. You gain 25 points. Same thing with the king of hearts, except it's doubled even more, going to 150 points negative and 75 for you. And that's how scoring works. And so you can see how you would lose a lot of points potentially in this part of the game. And generally how it goes is that during the tricks part of it, uh, you're gaining points because everyone gains points, even the last person, the person who comes at last there gets, still gets 50. Uh, and then during complex, you're really trying to not lose very many points. I believe in our game that we played, only two of the four players ended up in positive points. And if there's no doubling, I believe each set of tricks and complex is guaranteed to lose uh, 30 points, 35 points, something like that. I did the calculation. So it's definitely a game about not falling into negative numbers. Uh, it's super swingy, it's highly variable, and there are different variations. So actually, this is a sub-variation. I looked it up, and the main game, it seems like, from what I can tell, the primary game that's enjoyed uh, in Lebanon, Palestine, that area of the world, um, is actually longer. And instead of combining all four of these scoring parameters that I talked about, the tricks, the queens, the king of hearts, um, and the diamonds, you separate those out. So each player nominates a game to be played individually, and there are four trick-taking games and then the tricks game. Uh, and that way, the game goes on a lot longer, and the scoring is a lot quite as insane and swingy. I think that would be a fun way to play. I don't know how long it would drag, because you're playing then 20 hands of cards, uh, which is pretty long, I think, for a trick-taking game. Anyways, Look it up, and if you have information, if this is a game you grew up playing, for instance, I would love to hear about your favorite way to play it, because I'm sure, like with many games, there are all kinds of variations. I remember learning Euchre in college, and I learned from one person they had one way of playing, I learned from another person who lived one state over, and they had a completely different other way of playing. So that's kind of how this goes. I would love to hear about your favorite way of playing Tricks, or Tricks Complex, or any of the sub-variations. Because I think it's super fun. It was casual, it was swingy, it was chaotic. Uh, people went from first to last and last to first. Uh, really chill game. 
fun times. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed learning about this game. And uh, if you would like to see more about what I do, go to thethoughtfulgamer.com. If you'd like to support me, go to patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. And please do not forget to subscribe. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers, so hit that button below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week.